there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, and we're gonna do a little painting today. Oh, I wanna let you know that I just finished doing this uh, painting here, this mallard duck, and this tutorial will be available in my shop, Lindsay Stamp Stuff, and I'll put a link below the video in the video description if you wanna check that out. All right, so um, to begin, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna wet my paper just with some clear water here and a one inch flat brush. I'm working on um, Fabriano Rough paper so it's got a little more texture than um, than your regular cold press paper but you can use cold press sometimes it's fun though to kind of do something different so um, I grabbed this out of my filing cabinet today and decided to give it a whirl I'm gonna use some ultramarine blue but I want to uh, knock that down a little bit so I'm gonna add a little bit of burnt sienna to it just to kind of gray it up all right you can kind of see how that's a little bit more gray and I'm gonna go in at the top of my paper and add some of this You'll notice on the rough paper, your paint does not blend as well um, or as much. So I want to say well, because um, that's actually the effect I'm going for here. And we're going to paint a little stream. So what I'm going to do is just kind of throw it in here with that um, ultramarine blue. This one, I kind of have it. There's a horizon line kind of It's a little woodland stream here. Put in some more blue on its own, maybe add a little bit of um, blue plus yellow ochre, get kind of like a dull green in there. I'm just feeling like having something, something springy. Now I want to add some sap green here and there, just kind of let it all fade around. So it's just going to give me some background. Um, just some background trees that are going to blur out and I think I'll also put a little bit of um, ultramarine in there just to give it kind of some brightness back here as well and then what I do in the sky I also want to do in the water so I'm going to put a little bit of that in there too okay and then um, the paper's still wet so I'm kind of limited to what I can do as far as um, as texture and stuff, but I think what I might do is mix up some colors, some just some dark gray, and I like to do that with my burnt sienna and my ultramarine blue. And I think I might just kind of um, sculpt in some rocks using my little bit of old uh, credit card because that's one of my favorite uh, techniques. And plus, this is just going to be a quick tutorial, so I'm just going to slap in some paint here, and then I'm going to start scraping with my scraper to give it some texture. Just some little little rocks here and there. It's going to be really hard to see what's going to become of these until the paper dries and we can add a little bit more texture to it. And then I'm going to blot a little bit just so that I have some lines and I've got some texture. All right, I'm going to let this dry and we're going to come back and we're going to do some more to this picture. Okay, uh, my paper is pretty dry. I just used my heat tool to dry it up a bit and I'm going to go in a, with a little bit of this um, uh, inky ultramarine plus burnt sienna to kind of make a little bit of a uh, grayish and I am actually going to put in some of the contours of my stream. I know it looks a little bit a little bit scary right now because we've got you know crazy lines but don't worry it will be fine, I promise you. So I just want to figure out where I want my stream to end. I think I want my stream ending kind of back there. And I want to add some more ultramarine in there just to kind of blue it up and make it really look like, like some shadows in the water. I want to add some, um, some definition back there to show that there's some trees and stuff. So I'm going to grab a sponge and I'm going to grab some nice, uh, I think I'll grab a little bit of cadmium yellow and also some sap green. And I think I'm going to just kind of dab in some bushes here along the edge. I think I'll grab some ultramarine and then some sap green for a nice dull kind of color and add some up here so the uh, darker color will kind of make it tend to recede a bit just add a little bit of depth there maybe put some right up here going right off the edge now if you've done any hiking um, 
in the mountains, you get these, you know, these, these little streams that kind of trickle down the mountainside. And um, I'm lucky to live in an area where I can pretty much go out my back door and find situations like this to hike. Um, there we go. I'm going to add a little bit of this kind of more reddish. I set out to do a spring stream today, but I do find myself always wanting to go back to the lovely colors of autumn. There we go. Oh, that's kind of pretty. And I love how um, you can be very abstract with nature. This is a little thing I made. It's I took a bunch of rubber bands and I, I, I grabbed them together and I put a rubber band around and then I snipped all the loops on one side so I got this really interesting tool for um, for making like uh, foliage and washes and you just get this really um, speckly interesting uh, I don't know, texture when you pounce it around so that's something I kind of like to use sometimes. I'll use a regular old kitchen sponge that I've cut up into different shapes also to um, to sponge on some foliage. So, you know, look around your house and see what you have. You can make some really cool tools that way. All right, I'm going to go back to the water a bit. And I want to add a little bit of that yellow since I did put some yellow in my, um, in my foliage. I want to have some of that in my water as well. I try to keep the colors in the water not quite as vivid. I feel like I want a little bit more yellow ochre color in there. Just kind of mimic what I'm seeing around. I'm going to put a little green in there too. Sometimes I find it's easier to do this with a larger brush because I can't be fussing around with the tiny details. I apologize if I sound a little off. I've uh, been extremely tired this week. I think that I've, um, I don't know if I, if it's just exhaustion from, uh, from my kids being home from school and just running around or if I was coming down with a touch of something. I don't know. I've just been, um, been very tired <laughs> this week. There we go. As long as you get the colors in there, your stream's going to start looking like a stream. Boy, this is a lot easier to do right side up. I have to say, I'm so glad that I've uh, figured out a way to set my uh, camera camera angle. I think I would put some tree trunks in there, um, but I but I'm gonna kind of I kind of want them to be kind of gray. So I'm just picking up some kind of dirty paint for my palette, which is you know just my mixes of like ultramarine blue and um, and burnt sienna. And I'm gonna throw in a few branches here. They're not going to be really silhouetted because um, it's, you know, not, it's not a sunset or a sunrise, so I can actually get some color into the branches. I'll just kind of throw them on like that. I did put a little burnt sienna in that one. I wanted, I like the, the uh, trunks that are closer to the foreground to be a little bit warmer in color because then they look a little bit more natural. The ones further away can be a little bit more darker and grayer. I'll probably put a little bit of foliage on. And then if I want some little tiny guys back there, I could just kind of tap them in with the chisel edge of my brush. It also helps to um, bring depth through the picture. And I know where my rocks are because I scraped them in, but I'm kind of kind of working around them right now. I'm going to go in with some more detail on those in a bit. It's the lost and found branches here that I want to get in there. It's funny how trees and stuff will just pop up wherever, wherever they find room, between rocks, next to the stream, doesn't matter, they'll they'll find a way to, to fit in there. It's just their way. There we go. Oh my gosh, I've seen so much lovely wildlife. We had two ducks on our back lawn today. It was, it was so neat. Um, we had a mallard, uh, two mallards actually, the, you know, the male with a bright green head and its mate. And um, it was so cool, so cool to see. All right, now I'm gonna dab in some little leaves on my, fo my foreground branches here. Just my number 10 round. I'm gonna alternate using my yellow and my sap green. I don't want them to be too uniform. I just kind of want to 
get them in there. You don't see everything in focus when you're looking at something. You see little bits here and there. Some things will be crisp and in focus, other things will be blurry. That's how we get our depth. Kids are going to be home every, any moment, actually. It's weird. You're the first day back to school after vacation. You get so used to having them around, and then, then the house is so quiet. All right. So I want to add um, a few rocks in the background. I'm going with my uh, ultramarine blue, my burnt sienna. It's going to make a nice dark gray. And I'm just going to throw these some of these dark shapes. I'll need a little more brown in there. It's all too blue. Let's throw some of these little rocks kind of dotting around here and there. The uh, water's still wet, so I gotta be careful around that. Bigger as they get closer to the foreground. A nice loose impressionistic painting is a great way to uh, either start your painting day or to uh, wrap up. Now I'm going to grab some puddles of color and I go back in with my scraper here because then I could just kind of drag them around a bit, get some nice uh, nat natural shapes. One of the smaller end there. I do like to save my old gift cards, credit cards, keep them for this purpose. They work really well. And oops. some of my darker colors again, adding some more loose, loose rocks. It's funny because like I know people sometimes get nervous when they're painting and they're like, it's not coming out right. I just don't trust that it's going to come out right. What a mess I'm making. It's getting worse and worse. Um, but then all of a sudden it starts to come around and you start to have a painting and you you know you're surprised because you kind of get to that point where you're like oh I don't know I don't know if this is gonna come out but that conf that comes with com that confidence comes with you know the more you do it and I'm putting in some scraping marks here that I'll define a little bit later I'm gonna go to the water's edge now with a little bit of a, a bluish gray again I'm just using my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna I can go in and kind of Define the edges, keeping my stream. I tend to look at um, look at landscapes kind of abstractly, and you know, because if you're working for a photo, either the one you've taken or somebody else's, it's rarely ever exactly the way you'd want it to look. So you can kind of edit it, and you can go in, and you can do your own thing. You know, get you know, use a reference photo for. Um, you know, an idea of what you want for colors. Here I've got a little burnt sienna. I'm just going to go in and throw in some, just some dirt around this on the forest floor here. Don't worry if it mixes and mingles and with the other colors, things should get more fuzzy as it gets further away. Got a lot of light in this uh, scene, so. Don't worry if you get some bleached out areas. If you have some really light areas, that's fine. You can always go back in and add a little bit more. Get some green in there too, maybe some nice moss growing on our forest floor. Maybe even on some of the rocks. All right. I I want to maybe put a little bit of um, maybe some little bushes in here. It's going in with my sponge. I'm not worrying about it. No point in worrying about it. You're putting paint on paper. You should have fun. And it's funny because like I'm looking at this. I'm like, oh boy, this is kind of this is kind of crazy and messy. But I look up at my monitor and it's like, you know what? It's really not that bad. Um, you know, something else that I like to do. Um, if I want some, some foliage way in the background is I'll grab an old toothbrush and I will pick up some color and I want it kind of darker. Well, I got a lot of color on there. And I'll just kind of draw my finger across the edge of the toothbrush. And sometimes I'll take a, um, a torn piece of paper and I'll use it kind of as a mask so I can really direct where I want my 
color to go. And I'll do that with a few different shades. Do a little bit more with some yellow. Just so it gives me the impression of some things growing that aren't necessarily specific. All right, now I want some foreground, just some kind of shrubs or bushes, and I'm going to use um, burnt sienna with a little bit of yellow because burnt sienna has really stood in as my red. I'm just looking for a finer brush. This is number six round. I really like that one. Um, so I'm going to use my burnt sienna and my cadmium yellow. And you know, I could introduce another red at this point, but I really, I really try to keep it kind of simple. Maybe I will if I think these shrubs really aren't standing out. I think I'm going to dry this up. Hold on a moment. I'm going to dry this up and, and uh, it'll be easier to show that. Make that sh All right. There we go. I'm going to go in again and we'll paint those, we'll paint those, uh, we'll paint those little, little shrubs in there again. There we go. Now it's showing up because I'm on nice dry paper. Things that just haven't come into bloom yet. We'll throw some of those in and around our rocks. Now this is definitely, um, you know, if you ever go to Acadia National Park in Maine, you see a lot of these little, these little, you see a lot of scenes like this, really. Um, these little red, I don't know what you call them. I always, we used to always like to whittle them when we were kids. Just little red switches kind of going here and there. But it serves a purpose of giving us a little a little foreground in our picture. I want to uh, define the edges of the stream again, because now that the paper's dry, I can get a little bit more in there, go with my ultramarine. A little bit of uh, burnt sienna in there to kind of dull it down a little bit, just kind of carve out a little detail. Right along that water's edge. I can go in my damp brush and drag some of that over. It really does. You know, it's just a little trick. It gives you a lot of depth. And it's so easy. And I can even throw in a few little ripples in the water if I want to. Just try to keep it. I feel like I'm working kind of at a weird angle here. I just try to keep it horizontal. I've got my paper tipped a little bit. Sometimes it's hard for me to tell if I'm going perfectly horizontal or if I'm a little skewed. Just want to throw a little a little bit of a ripple in our tranquil stream and then go back in and work on a little bit uh, more rocks because my rocks got kind of um, uh, I lost definition in some of them so I just want to kind of go back in and scrape them around a little bit just a few here and there I like to paint rocks. I like putting rocks in. It's good to put a little bit of yellow ochre. Whoops. I'm running out of clean spots in my palette. A little bit of yellow ochre on some of them just to show where the sunlight is hitting them. A lot of times I'll go in, I'll put a bunch of paint in, and then I'll go in, I'll rinse my brush off, then I'll go in and I'll kind of spread it around and lighten it up. And sometimes I forget and then I go in and I'll see, it's like, huh, I wonder what I put that splat of paint there for. <laughs> and it's like, oh yeah, that was supposed to be a rock and I totally forgot to uh, do anything else to it, but that's all right. Those little tree trunks need a little, need a little hand. Kind of lost that guy somewhere along the way. This is what spring looks like in Maine, actually. We have a lot of uh, bare branches that haven't quite filled out yet. Actually, nothing's really quite filled out yet. Everything's still pretty, pretty brown and gray until you get into May, really? Oh my goodness, we're almost out of time. I'm going to finish up this tree trunk here and, um, you know, just find some photos, go outside, paint what you see. It's so much fun. I hope you enjoyed this quick little um, spring stream uh, tutorial. Sign your name, you did a great job. Um, if you want to check out the Mar Mallard Duck tutorial, it's in my shop, Lindsay Stamp Stuff, link below. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this video. Uh, thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Thank you.